We're joined now from Tokyo by Masaki Kano, a former Bank of Japan official and current chief economist at J.P. Morgan Securities Japan. Masaki Kano, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. Uh, but what was the point of this? Well, the most important part of the policy change uh, was the BOJ's decision to buy the real assets such as the ETFs and JREIT, which other central banks have not uh, implemented in the past. So the BOJ actually is a front runner in this sense in terms of the unconventional policies. That was, in essence, the decisive part of the move. But what about the rate cut itself? Why did they bother doing that? Well, actually, the, it's not a big change. Although the BOJ announced that the rate would be cut uh, to one, 0 and 1 percent, but as Shirakawa-san said in his press conference, that it only means that the BOJ would allow the overnight call rate, that the policy rate, to diverge from the 1 percent on the downside when the other liquidities are more than enough. So the effective uh, policy rate would be not so much from the, uh, the, uh, uh, the existing uh, the, the rates. So the, in my view, that the rate cut is not uh, the main part of the policy change, uh, but please don't call it a zero rate policy. OK. Uh, let's just also talk about the other side, the asset side of it. How can that possibly help to deflate, or should I say reflate, the economy there in Japan? Well, the direct impact is limited uh, because uh, the total amount of the B that, that the BOJ would buy those assets is, is quite small. But uh, the important part is a sort of announcement effect or a psy psychological effect. And um, when uh, Japan's economy well, uh, moves to the downturn, then the BOJ should increase the total amount of the purchases and e expand the scope of the real assets. That's the most important part of the economy. But this, this should play a role of the sort of the, uh, the shock absorber. And uh, what is actually needed is that the government should do something more on top of the BOJ's decision to uh, well, uh, encourage the firms to uh, invest and encourage the consumers to spend more. Let's just also look at the other side of this, which is uh, the yen and the strength of it. We saw a bit of weakness creeping yesterday after this move, but uh, we're bus business as usual now again. We're at 83 against uh, the dollar once more. Uh, what, you know, what line in the sand is being drawn right now as to when they go back in and start to buy dollars? Well, anyway, um, the, the yesterday's currency move was the weakness of the dollar, not the strength of the yen. Actually, the, uh, the euro yen uh, just uh, keep uh, rising. And uh, so, but if the dollar yen comes down to below 83, and especially when uh, stock prices start to fall, then uh, the odds that the, uh, the most BOJ start to buy uh, the, uh, the dollar would increase. Right. Let's also just talk about what message this sends out to other central banks here as well. Do others follow suit now? And if so, which ones? Well, the, the Fed is quite likely to uh, decide to purchase more long-dated Treasury in November. So the BOJ's decision should interpret that the BOJ did first and before the, uh, the Fed makes a decision. So that maybe we can call this game uh, sort of the uh, competitive easing uh, the, among the major central banks. So that if the, when after Fed uh, the eases the policy furthermore, and if the data yen falls, then the BOJ would, would have to take some other more actions. Masaki Kano, thank you very much indeed for joining us. He's a former Bank of Japan official and current chief economist at JP Morgan Japan.